that Jesus is coming. That Jesus is going to be coming for his beautiful... Welcome. This is our first Essential Wisdom, and I am so excited because, of course, with everything that's happened in the world, we are not able to have our usual tea, but we are here with our teacups to invite you to have a virtual tea. So gather the ladies that you usually would have at your table. You can do Zoom or any of those FaceTime. other things. FaceTime. And uh, gather your kids, and you can have a nice cup of tea. That's what we're doing this or time coffee. around. Or coffee. But um, I do like tea. So your children would love it. They can have uh, milk. They can have juice. But let's have fun um, at this first episode, drinking tea. Our first episode will air on May 9th, and we encourage you to gather your kids, your family, you could Zoom, FaceTime. I'm going to have it set up with my kids, and we will call my mom and have our virtual tea. And don't forget your hashtags to make sure to tag us, CCGS at home and CCGS Women's Tea 2020, so we could document. This is not how we planned our tea this year, but we do not want to forget it, and we want you ladies to join us and gather your family and have tea with us. It'll be a tea to remember.
Jesus is coming. That Jesus is going to be coming for his beautiful... Welcome. This is our first Essential Wisdom, and I am so excited because, of course, with everything that's happened in the world, we are not able to have our usual tea, but we are here with our teacups to invite you to have a virtual tea. So gather the ladies that you usually would have at your table. You can do Zoom or any of those other things. FaceTime. And uh, gather your kids. And you can have a nice cup of tea. That's what we're doing this or time coffee. around. Or coffee. But um, I do like tea. So your children would love it. They can have uh, milk. They can have juice. But let's have fun um, at this first episode, drinking tea. Our first episode will air on May 9th. And we encourage you to gather your kids, your family. You could Zoom, FaceTime. I'm going to have it set up with my kids, and we will call my mom and have our virtual tea. And don't forget your hashtags to make sure to tag us, CCGS at home and CCGS Women's Tea 2020, so we could document. This is not how we planned our tea this year, but we do not want to forget it, and we want you ladies to join us and gather your family and have tea with us. It'll be a tea to remember. Good morning and happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there and welcome to Essential Wisdom. I am Lauren O'Neill. My husband is Pastor Wade O'Neill and we're here with Melissa Salamat, Scott, Pastor Scott Salamat's wife. We're here with Nicole McKeon, Pastor Sean McKeon's wife, and we have Claire Ren Endron, our women's tea overseer. And we are so excited to be here with you this morning. Normally around Around this time, we would be just wrapping up our women's tea, but due to the circumstances, we are going to have a virtual tea here this morning, and we're so happy you were able to join us this morning. Uh, Essential Wisdom is a going to be a series, a six-week series that's going to be airing every other week, and the Lord really put it on our pastor's wife heart, um, Sharon Reese to um, connect with the women in a, in a very special way. And we're going to be going over different topics each week, having different guests each week. So we're so excited to take part in the in this series with you. I had the uh, really neat opportunity to talk with Sharon over the phone um, and spend some time with her um, just as she was sharing and encouraging me and just kind of hearing her um, just go through her life as a missionary, a, a, a missionary in South America, all the way through her life, raising her boys and being a grandmother. 
And at the end of our conversation, it was just a sweet time together with her, just going through things. My last question to her was, Sharon, what's the most important thing? What would you encourage the women? If you could talk to all the women right now, what would be the one thing that you would encourage them in out of all your years of serving the Lord, raising your children, raising your grandchildren, being married? What, what's the one thing? And she told me, Lauren, grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is all about Jesus. It is about his word. And that's what our heart is to bring you, is to bring you today, this morning, and over this next series, is the essential wisdom. It's not our wisdom. It's not the wisdom um, from politicians. It's not the wisdom from doctors. It's not the wisdom from anything. It's all about the essential wisdom, God's word, and what he would have to say. And that's what's really going to, to keep us during these difficult times, that's what's going to guide us. That's what's going to give us instructions. That is what is going to bring us life. When we feel like we are at the end of ourselves or we're facing difficult situation, it is only going to be God's word that will sustain you and, and encourage you through the difficult times. It's not what man says. Man's word may fail, but God's word is everlasting. It's true. It is it divides between the bone and the marrow. It convicts, it encourages, it brings love. And all the things that you are looking for in whatever situation you may be facing, God is going to lead you through his word. And as we go through these different topics in this series, we're going to be talking about very difficult subjects. We are going to be talking about fun subjects, just different things, but we're going to see what God's word has to say about each one of those things. And Melissa and I were just talking um, not too long ago about how the Lord has really prepared us for this time through his word um, at our women's retreat. And Melissa, why don't you talk a little bit about our women's retreat and just what the Lord did, you know, that weekend and just the topics that were discussed. Yes, this year, um, for those who were not there at the women's retreat, the topic, the scripture was Psalms 23, the Lord is our shepherd. And I think it is so, um, we've learned so much up there, just how the Lord has gone before us with everything. And we don't need to fear because we have a shepherd that knows how to lead us individually. And even though we're all Going through similar things with the quarantine right now, the Lord is dealing with us individually in our hearts and just doing this work, but he has gone before us on that path, so we don't need to fear. And even at the retreat, the Lord was already um, behind the scenes, kept changing things, and we were laughing because we kept saying, man plans his ways, but the Lord directs his path, and we would just go with whatever change that he made, and that's how I feel about this year. We had our plans, we had our ways, and um, but the Lord had other plans, and especially for the women's tea, we miss the women so much, but Claire, when you um, were planning this year, did you ever think, okay, I have to plan for a virtual tea? I had no idea whatsoever. There's usually about a thousand women that come into this chapel for tea, and I go, Lord, you've got a tea with a twist. You have a tea that is um, now going to be virtual, and we're going to have tea with women around the world, if you can believe that, that are going to tune in with, um, with their families at home. It might be a, um, you might even have some boys, Nicole, yeah. around the table <laughs> having tea and making a memory and then calling mom and, and saying, here, let's have some tea. Well, usually when we do the tea, we have some tidbits, so I have to give you a little bit of tidbits with this tea. The British love their tea. They have it in all kinds of weathers. So it's very cold and frigid in England, and uh, we drink our tea to warm up, of course. But then, as crazy as it may sound, they drink tea in the heat. They drink tea in India. Can you imagine a table like this in the middle of nowhere, well, you know, a woman with a missionary hat sitting there being served tea out in the heat, but that's the British for you. Um, the working class drink tea. They thought, well, a bit of sugar and, and some milk and, uh, and a cup of tea will make them work harder. Uh, all they had usually was a bit of bread in the day, um, in those days in, in history. So, you know, you have your tea, you, you have your hot water, you put the tea bag in and you let it steep. Steep? What does steep mean? Steep means you're just letting that tea bag 
release the flavors into the water. It steeps for a while and then you drink it. Um, let me put my glasses on. I, do, I am a note taker girl, so I, I do have uh, my notes. Um, I'm receiving bad news. The British would sit down and have a cup of tea. That was their way of, of relaxing. And there was this key phrase, and it was called, keep calm and carry on. Have you heard that, leaders? Keep calm and carry on. Where did that come from? Well, in 1939, in preparation for World War II, to keep up the morale of the British, um, as the uh, Germans were bombing London in the Blitz, they uh, had these posters that they were going to put around all over London. They made about two million of them, and they didn't actually get put up. But the thought, the phrase caught on even today, I still have a cup upstairs, and it's keep calm and drink tea. Keep calm and carry on in this coronavirus environment that we're in. And seriously, it is sad that there are over 200,000 people, I believe, that have died. And, um, you know, we, you could say we are in hot water in the midst of this pandemic. We're being steeped. And what should come out of our lives, I wrote down 2 Corinthians 2.15, for we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. As we steep, we give the fragrance of his love, his mercy, and his grace to a lost world. And we are celebrating Mother's Day this Sunday. And I thought of the women that are at home in this pandemic. And I thought how wonderful it would be if we together would read Proverbs 31 um, as the Lord encourages our hearts and your hearts. We know that um, in this, there was a godly queen mother giving advice to her princely son, and it is believed that that was Bathsheba, and possibly was her giving her wisdom, her essential wisdom, you could say, to her son, Solomon. She was very perceptive of her son's future responsibilities. He needed to reign, and he needed to reign with wisdom, and he needed to choose a godly wife. Um, so as we go through this, and as you're sheltering in place, isn't that a perfect time, too? I couldn't help but think of mothers like yourselves. As you're sheltering place, you have your sons, and you are giving essential wisdom to them. Do you have any things that you could say to our tea audience today that would encourage them? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I totally agree with you, Claire. What an, a unique opportunity to really so give our children Jesus and to spend that devotional time with them and, and just walking with them. I think of, De in, what is it, in Deuteronomy, where it says, you know, to walk in the word and to walk in his ways. And the, it may be at the doorstep or the um, doorposts, I mean, written yes. all over. And we just have this unique time. And, and it looks different for all of us. Melissa has... Young yes. children and older Sometimes children. Sometimes the devotions. And that's what's been awesome during this time is that we're not rushed. Yeah. And we just get to be home and we have these awesome online studies. But we have the time to take that we always wish we had with our kids mm -hmm. to just really pour into them. And sometimes the devotions are two minutes long. Sometimes it's a good 30 minutes and it, everybody's calm in the house. It just... It's like you said, we're just, it's something that we talk about constantly Throughout because the day. sometimes they'll sit there and sometimes it's, mm -hmm. you know, we just chaos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have four boys, I don't have you? Three boys. Three boys. Yes. And yeah, same as Melissa. Sometimes it's really good and they're listening and it's going well. And then other times it's just utter chaos and you just got to go with it. Well, be encouraged. I know that young Timothy. Um, it says in the Bible, his mother and his grandmother mm. poured into their, his life. And it says, uh, Paul said of him, when I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which first dwelt in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded is, that is in you. So it's wonderful that you can pour into your kids and have that. So let's uh, read some of the Proverbs. It says, who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts in her, so he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. Um, I think that's a wonderful thing. And, and with women going through what they're going through, 
I think women today are in the budgets that they are making. They're stretching every penny. They're making um, good use of, of, that, of that time. What do, you, what do you think about that? What's, how are you being that virtuous woman right now? I know I'm putting you on the spot a little bit. But it's no, we, like they, they need help out there. We're definitely <laughs> abiding by the budget. <laughs> More on food, less on gas. <laughs> oh, we're saving on gas for yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. I think I filled up for like 220 <laughs> the other day, and I'm like, I will not miss that. <laughs> oh. I mean, I will miss yes. that if that ever goes up. But just... Like you said, working with what we have, you know, for in the beginning of the quarantine, we didn't know when we were going to be able to go to the store next, when we were going to be able to, you know, go to Target next to get this, the simple necessities. And what I saw and what we were talking about on the phone the other day, Claire, was just the community that we were encouraged by, people checking in on one another, people dropping off things and, you know, do you need toilet paper? I'm running to the store. And just make that sense of community and taking care of each other, I think is really beautiful. Yeah, I really think it's um, we can be salt and light uh, at this time, and um, that's what I'm noticing too. Like women are making big pots of food, they're making bread, they're having tea, they are doing all kinds of things. I've seen pictures actually of teacups with uh, cookies and with uh, you know homemade bread. Like the the woman in the home, the virtuous woman is really, mm -hmm. it's really good right now. Um, let's continue to read. It says, she is like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and a portion for her maidservants. She considers a field and she uh, buys it from the, her profit. She plants a vineyard. And you can just really see that she's an industrious woman. She's a hardworking woman, like you were saying. She girds herself with strength, and I really want to uh, touch on this just for a moment because many women right now, they're, they're saying, how can I cope? I'm, I've got my little ones. I'm trying to homeschool uh, kids. I'm trying to, um, you know, online teaching with the, with, with the school schedule. And um, I thought of one woman in history because it's like, when do you get the devotional time? Well, there was Susanna Wesley, and there was uh, she had 19 children, if you can believe it. And John and Charles Wesley actually had a revival in England, but she needed her quiet time, so I'm going to direct this to Nicole, and I'm going to give her a gift. This is an apron for you, and if you would please put the, that over your face. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly what Susanna Wesley would do. Her children were trained to know that when she put her apron over her face, that was her quiet time with the Lord, and that was her source of strength. In the name of the Lord, in the strength of the Lord, you mummies can do it out there. You can have your devotional time, and you can even have time to write in your journals. I um, have time at home. I don't have little ones anymore. I have a dog in Victoria. But I don't have little ones running around. So I can um, have my time with the Lord. And he gave me this for um, such a time as this, I think. It was taken from Song of Solomon 1.3. And it says, The king has brought me into his chambers. And I wrote, What is this unique chamber to which the bride refers? Um, the bride is, is the bride of Christ, of the church. And, and the bridegroom is Christ, just so you know. Um, his chosen bride still resides in a spiritually dark and evil world. We do. In times of great peril and under um, satanic onslaught, she is invited to come to a place of security and safety, of intimate communion with him. It's the bridal chamber. This secret place to which she can freely and always come gives her complete protection. His bride is able to take cover from the calamities of life, away from all oppression, fear, anxiety, and stresses. While hidden, her life paused in a timeless union, union of stillness and quietness with her bridegroom until the storm passes over. Here lies the secret of her inner strength, the aloneness of an unbreakable bond between two loves, the bridegroom and his bride. And I thought, you know, in those times, the Lord will give us those nuggets just to help us go on. C.H. Spurgeon said, the love of Christ helps, and he said a man, but I'm going to say a woman, to fight the battles of life. 
it makes life with all its cares and troubles a happy one. It enables a woman to do great exploits and make her strong for suffering, strong for self-sacrifice in these days, and strong for service. That is so needed today. Women need the strength of the Lord. As we read on in verse 18, let's go back to uh, Proverbs 31. It says, she perceives that her merchandise is good and her lamp doesn't go out by night. I know there's mothers up day and night, I can assure you. She stretches her hand out to the distaff and she hold, hand holds the spindle. She extends her hands to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. And I think you touched that, uh, Lauren. Like, I have seen incredible things like women making all these masks. So everyone that can sew has now made wonderful masks. Can you say that in the American accent, please? Masks. There you go. So <laughs> that's a translation for you, ladies. <laughs> all right. So, and, and people are, neighbors are like, are you okay? Do you need anything? You know, have you got the toilet paper? Have you got food? Have you got ground beef? Because we couldn't found, find ground beef for quite a while. It's an outpouring of love, and it's, it's really needed. But as we go on to verse 21, it says, She is not afraid of snow for a household, for all her household is clothed with scarlet. She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is of fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates, that place of prominence, when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them, and I'm terrible at sewing. So God bless all you women that can <laughs> sew. I failed so sewing in school. But um, anyway, <laughs> she makes sashes for the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she will rejoice in time to come. And I thought when I read that, you know what? We're going to get through this time. We are going to get through this time. The Lord promises us a future and a hope in Jeremiah 29, 11. And I thought the joy of the Lord is our strength. She rejoices. That is where our strength comes from. And um, I couldn't help but think of people that maybe don't know the Lord at this time. And uh, further on in Jer Jeremiah, it says that you can seek the Lord. You can call on his name and he will be found if you need him, if you seek him with your whole heart. The virtuous woman. We have so many women in the Bible, like Abigail. What wisdom she had when she opened her mouth. And this says here, she opens her mouth with wisdom, and on her tongue is the law of kindness. And I couldn't help but think of families now that are locked up together 24-7 with the temptation of saying not the right thing to build up but to tear down. Have you got any wisdom for the, for the ladies out there? Like, what do you do when you're, you're going crazy and you, you need that self-control? with your mouth. I what? said, put your mask on in your house. Put your so mask you on in your house. <laughs> so you don't say bad stuff. And you guys have <laughs> you calm down. You guys have to pray for Wade. He's locked up with three girls. Three girls. <laughs> Poor guy. The patience. <laughs> yeah, and exactly I, I, the patience. Yeah, and I think there's another one on the way, right? <laughs> yes, we have another one on the way, another little girl. Wow. So um, She'll have three virtuous girls to bring up with essential wisdom. Yes, and poor Wonderful. Wade will be living with four girls. <laughs> <laughs> and here we go again. It says in verse 27, she watches over the way of her household and she does not eat the bread of idleness. There is no time to be idle. We can't waste time. We've got to redeem the time. Her, her children rise up, and this is something very encouraging. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. This is key. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. But let me go back to a minute to the fear of the Lord. That is is everything. I mean, all the other attributes of this woman balance on the fear of the Lord. Matthew Henry said it's the crown of her character and the beauty, beauty, beauty of her soul. And I know, Lauren, that you really love that, the fear of the Lord. I think I heard you say in a few comments on that when we were together one time. Do you have any thoughts on the fear of the Lord for women? And I 
really the, having the fear of the Lord, it's, it's like a healthy reverence for him, not being scared or intimidated. It's not like we serve this God that's just looking at us and pointing down from heaven and judging us and condemning us, but it's, it's quite the opposite. We serve a God who loves us, who is sovereign, who is in control of every detail yes. of our lives. And I think having that relationship with him and that re that respect, knowing that you serve, that we serve the savior of the world, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, that has every detail of our life in our hands, even through this pandemic, through this, yes. this situation, we have never left the, um, the palm of his hand. And when we recognize and we walk forward in that mentality, you want to be holy for he is holy. You want to serve him and, uh, and do the things that he's called us to do. Yeah, I think that really um, will help women because if you trust this God that created the whole world, you're going to you're going to have calm in the midst of the storm. You're, go you're going to have the peace Absolutely. that you need each and every day. And take one day at a time. Don't think, oh, that can this be over in a couple of weeks when you're looking. Just take one day at a time and make the best of it, I think, that you can. And I, I really want to close with uh, just these few thoughts. Um, Queen Bathsheba and her sphere of influence on her son. And he may have made many mistakes, but I believe she... in instilled in him the fear of the Lord because he ended the book of Ecclesiastics by saying, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Mm -hmm. Fear God and keep his commandments. So as you have joined us here for a little bit of virtual tea, I want to say this in closing. May God keep you calm and may he carry you on. Thank you. <laughs> and I, I really quickly, I want to go back to one of the things that you've talked about, Claire, was having the strength Yes. And, the, and, and being strong during this time. And, and, it, and I believe it ties in with having the fear of the Lord because where are you going to find that strength and that fear? And I don't know about you girls, but sometimes there was like a period in the beginning of this quarantine where I just kind of felt down. Like I was just like, Lord, what is going on? And I just kind of felt like... Depressed? Yeah, depressed. Yes, yeah, depressed. De and, and I didn't want to read my Bible and I didn't want to do those things to feed my spirit. But, and I had to look for ways to do that. So maybe it was some days, because I was crazy busy with the kids or the kids were adjusting or we were adjusting to having weight at home with us. Because, you know, when the guys are gone all day, you're on a different schedule. Now it's different when they're home, you're cooking a little bit more, you're cleaning more and, and all those things. But practically, what did that look like to en encourage myself in the Lord and strengthen my spirit? And I am so grateful that we have the women's ministry website and that all the Bible studies are up and past women's retreats because ladies, you can get on and go through a book of the Bible um, with our um, Bible teachers that we have had past, past Bible studies with. Go through a uh, retreat. Encourage yourself in the Lord. When I first had my children, Melissa, or started having kids, Melissa told me about the One Year Bible Online. And that was a great resource for me because sometimes I couldn't sit down and listen to a Bible study or do homework or open my Bible because I was holding my baby. But at least I had the Word of God going on in the back or um, next to me on my phone or on my computer or different, um, we have, uh, what's the app for the, was it the Word for Today app? Yeah, the Word for the Day. The Word for the Day app. Pick a series that Kay did and go through all her studies. And there's so many different ways to strengthen yourself in the Lord, to bring about that healthy fear of the Lord, and to um, just encourage yourself in Him. Yes, I think, I think that's very important, Lauren. Um, I think there's a danger of becoming self-absorbed with, anxiety and worry and I, I know that's very real for a lot of people mm -hmm. but um at this time you can have I think you said earlier about that rich let the word of God dwell in you richly mm -hmm. the the wisdom that you can have essential wisdom as this is called mm -hmm. just to take that time and have you have resources so you can uh, pour into yourself but in the same respect give out you know mm -hmm. I had a call from a young girl that was very depressed and anxious about these times and you go outside and you see all these things closed down and you're like what is this what it just seems so surreal and unreal to to people and it can be depressing but 
as you get in the in the word and you give out to others, uh, I always remember the the phrase "Jesus, others, yourself." Um, you have to get your eyes off yourself. You have to think, okay. Um, I, I like writing goals. In the morning, I, I have a to-do list. Like, I cannot sit there being idle. I'm like, and I check it off because I feel like I've accomplished something that day. And um, I, you are thinking of the people. Who can you call? I think Miriam um, was with us, and she was saying that. And I told that girl that, who else can you encourage? Like, don't be so self-absorbed and feeling down, feeling sorry for yourself and depressed. Like, There are people that need you to call them, to encourage them. You can pray with them. You can um, do some spring cleaning, for goodness sake. I mean, there are so many things that you can do to make the day happy in the Lord. Turn the worship music, have a cup of tea, and keep calm and carry on. Absolutely. It really does make a difference when you take your eyes off yourself you put them on Jesus and you ask him how he wants to use your life exactly. for this day. And we take it day by day, moment by moment, and see what the Lord would want to do in our lives. And Nicole, your moment by moments look pretty crazy with three boys at home. <laughs> yeah, it's been good. Um, they're just so funny. It's. Um, I was just thinking today how um, the Lord used this. My middle son, Jet, he's a little crazy and very... He's different, but I love him. He's so sweet. Um, I was watching the Bible series, and he came down. He was watching with me, and then he goes upstairs, and he starts writing, like, all these Bible comics. Like, he did one on David and Goliath, Samson, Revelation. Like, and I'm like, Lord, this is so cool because if this, like, stay-at-home order wouldn't have happened, he never would have, you know, we would have been busy, like, on our daily lives. So it's been really sweet, just the different um, – time that the Lord gives us like instead of complaining that we're just being home it's a sweet time just to see what the Lord wants to do with us and I'm so glad we were able to do this Claire I thank you so much um it's so encouraging like you're you're very welcome yeah and thank you for this I'm gonna be wearing it around my house (laughs) hey I might borrow that (laughs) we're gonna pass it around (laughs) exactly just don't scroll on your phone under it (laughs) (laughs) why do you have a bright light on mom (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so this is so fun. Join us. We're going to be having Essential Wisdom every second and fourth Saturday of the month. Our next one is May 23rd. Um, we're going to have be covering different topics such as children, teens, singles, marriage, and abuse. So um, join us next time. Invite your friends. Tell them about this. It's so, we're going to have so much fun. All right. Yes. Happy Mother's Day. We Happy miss Mother's you Day. so much.
Welcome. This is our first Essential Wisdom, and I am so excited because, of course, with everything that's happened in the world, we are not able to have our usual tea, but we are here with our teacups to invite you to have a virtual tea. So gather the ladies that you usually would have at your table. You can do Zoom or any of those Face other time. things. FaceTime. And uh, gather your kids, and you can have a nice cup of tea. That's what we're doing this or time coffee. around. Or coffee. But um, I do like tea. So your children would love it. They can have uh, milk. They can have juice. But let's have fun um, at this first episode, drinking tea. Our first episode will air on May 9th, and we encourage you to gather your kids, your family, you could Zoom, FaceTime. I'm going to have it set up with my kids, and we will call my mom and have our virtual tea. And don't forget your hashtags to make sure to tag us, CCGS at home and CCGS Women's Tea 2020, so we could document. This is not how we planned our tea this year, but we do not want to forget it, and we want you ladies to join us and gather your family and have tea with us. It'll be a tea to remember. Darkness, my God, that is who you 